Tonight's sermon is entitled, Everything Made New, taken from Psalms 98. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wonderful things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained the victory for him. Young Mary sank, exhausted into a bed of straw, cradling her newborn child. She dozed as she often did, pondering in her heart what had come to pass through the birth of her child. She recalled what relatives and strangers, even angels, had said about this tiny one, who he was and what he would achieve. In the half-dreaming haze of a woman, exhausted by the visits of these strangers and full of joy of the appearing of God with us. She became aware of rustling of leaves stirred by a chilling wind from the east. Shivering, her first thoughts was of her boy, and looking upon him, she can see his infant eyes were not on her but riveted on the entry of the peasant hut in which they were staying. In the entry, brittle leaves, decomposing signs of a decrepit old woman, the crone. Mary became aware that the child knew this woman and that she knew the child. Wrapped in rags that hinted of decay, The woman shuffled towards the child. The tiny stove, the hut, only guarded against the chill, seemed to shrink, dampened by the ghostly appearance. Its flickering flame struggled for life, and the shadow advanced. Mary held the child closer, for the chilling presence threatened. Looking closely at the intruder, Mary could see that she might once, long ago, have been a dazzling beauty, but now the woman's face appeared as a head of death, filled with wrinkles, framed by silver white hair, cold and lifeless eyes peering from the deep sockets. The eyes glanced back and forth as if fleeing from some poisonous fruit. Her sagging skin and brittle bones carried hints of death. Mary began to pity her, for she seemed to bear a thousand, thousand years of sorrow. Mary felt in her heart that the old crone had lost a thousand children that she had mothered, seen a thousand cheering armies marched away into slaughter, witnessed a thousand proud kings fall, suffered every disappointment, every dashed hope, and every grief that could be born. Mary's sympathetic dream was interrupted when she saw the crone move. Her gnarled old hands rummaged. She was looking for something, something to give the child. Though what was in her hand was only a shriveled little thing, she lifted it as though upon it balanced the weight of the whole entire world. She knelt before the child, still holding that something, extended towards the infant. After what seemed an earth's age, her shoulders began to shake, and Mary heard sobbing from the throat. Agonizingly, slowly, her knotted hand loosened its grip, finger by finger, pried from its filthy prize. Now, at last, she dropped its burden at the child's feet. What she laid there came forth only reluctantly, though. The thing had fitted into her hands as though it had been there forever. Yet the gift was as if it was something freely given, though, for the gift itself had somehow deceived her. It reminded her of past guilt and sadness, of hopes crushed and dreams never realized. The gift was supposed to bring joy Instead, it had delivered one trouble followed by the next, so that while one part of her desired to keep the gift because of the promises it so freely made, 
The other side, more practical, when faced with bitter reality, she knew things must be given up or things would grow even worse than they were. And so with sobs and tears, she brought forth the ancient artifact and laid it at the baby's feet. What she she lay there appeared to be a worm-infested apple core, black and much by the age of handling, though it matters not what fruit it was as much as the fruit that came from it. Now the child whom Mary had fed with curds and honey reached a tender reached a tender little hand and grasping the core picked up the old woman's burden. Now it was no longer hers, but now it was his. What she could not bear to release, he took. What he did not love and did not have to take up, he grasped. And before Mary could stop the child, she saw with horror that he swallowed down the decaying core. Immediately his eyes became like burning coals, flames of fire that pierced the dark. Mary could see that those eyes were fixed upon the old crone, whose eyes formerly cold pits now reflected the light which, the light which came from the child's eyes. Her eyes rekindled by the child, a transformation spread over her whole face. Eyes bright with life shared by the child now gave new youth. Her rags were replaced with new royal robes. The scarf on her head now sparkled with seven stars. She rose, still bowed in reverence to the child. She turned to go back into the night, now taller and more than before, now not ragged, but beautifully dressed, as though she might be a bride ready to receive her bridegroom. She turned to leave, and looking over her shoulder, she gave the child a loving glance. Mary gasped, for upon seeing the woman's transformed face, she realized that that woman looked like her. The woman flashed a smile of joy at Mary and disappeared into the Judean night. In the morning, Mary was not sure if what she had seen that she thought she had dreamed. But the neighbors were all astir because beautiful flowers and fruit trees had sprouted up overnight in the town where there had been only wintry death. The neighbors said that there now seems to be a little slice of the Garden of Eden all over the town. In the cold, life had returned to their village in full flower. Even the lilies were blooming where they had never been before, and the rose of Sharon sprang to life. Everything had been made anew. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace, There will be no end to the increase of his government or of his peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Surely our griefs he himself bore and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken smitten of God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, and by his scourging we are healed. Joseph, son of David, not to be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which she has conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bear a son, and you shall call him by the name of Jesus, For it is he who will save his people from all their sins. And Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has had regard for the humble state of his servant. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. 
and holy is his name. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent away the rich empty-handed. He has given help to Israel, his servant, in remembrance of his mercy. Repent and let each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of God's Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off. As many as the Lord our God shall call to himself. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wonderful things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained the victory for him. Amen. <clears throat> 